what is this place? A private residence. Did you say we get breakfast here? Sure. I thought you said this was a tough town. Sure, it's tough, plenty. But the lady here is different. She's got a good heart. About the only one in town who has a day short. She runs a newspaper. See that? That's her. I've been making this stop for 25 years. And I remember Vinnie McCloud when she's the prettiest girl in Calamus County. My, was she pretty. You all gotta wait a minute. I'm fixing breakfast for the family. You ain't eating your spoon bread, Mrs. McCloud. What's the matter? You got a misery? No, I'm just not very hungry. Aida, I wish you'd wrap up those silver candlesticks. I want to take them with me this morning. What you need money for now? We've got vittles and a roof over our head, and Sam Wilson sent him down a ham this morning. I told him he was going to give him two extra pieces of advertising in the paper. Well, I can't go on giving people advertising unless I go on running a paper. And I can't do that without money. It's the first of the month, and the bills are due today. I'll wrap them up, Mrs. McCloud. Try and change the shape a little so that if anyone sees me. Don't you worry yourself, Mrs. McCloud. When I wrap them up, there ain't nobody gonna be able to guess what's in that package. What to do with that? Wash. Wash? Wash what? Your hands and face and anything else that shows. What for? Rule of the house. No wash, no breakfast. The colored woman looks you over before she'll give it to you. Gotta have your nails clean, too. What do they give you for breakfast? Hot cakes. That colored woman makes hot cakes like you've never seen. Thin. Soft, so they melt in your mouth. Great stacks of them, all piping hot with butter. Great gobs of butter, sitting on top, seeping through, and pouring down the side. You ain't kidding me. If you've got any heart, don't kid me. No, sir, but you've got to wash first. Yeah, there's a catch in everything. Good morning, Auntie. Good morning, dear. Sleep well? Yes, thank you. Auntie, you're wearing that same old dress again this morning. You promised me you'd buy yourself a new one. you like me to look nice. Oh, my dear, that's different. You're young and pretty. I haven't the money to spend dressing myself up. Of course you haven't when you spend it feeding trams down in the cellar. Good morning, Miss Jane. Good morning, Aida. You're late. Your aunt's finished her breakfast. I know. Aida, I'm... Going picnicking, will you put up a lunch for two? Who you all going with? Mm, what's that got to do with it? I don't fix no picnic lunch unless I know who's going to eat it. Aida, I can't sit here arguing. I want my breakfast. Picnic lunch for two. You're going with that Pete Doherty. Well, if you know, why do you ask? I just want to see if you'd admit it. Pete Doherty, the shanty Irish white Jane, do you care for Pete Doherty? What would be the use of my caring? He seems very interested in you. I know. Auntie, if he did think of me in that way, would you mind terribly? Well, of course, there are people I'd rather see you marry, but if you're really fond of him, I believe in love, Jane. He asked me to go out in his automobile this morning. I could be back at the office right after lunch. May I take the morning off? Of course, dear. I hope you have a nice time. 
Well, I must be on my rounds. Now you eat your breakfast and don't leave anything, or Aida will have a misery and we can't have that. I'm just going, Aida. Yes, sir. There's your package. You were right. No one will ever be able to tell what it is. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. If that isn't enough, there's plenty more where that came from. Thank you, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye ma'am. May I come in? Why, this is McLeod. Sure, sure, come in. Anything I can do for you? Yes, Mr. Blake. You remember my silver candlesticks? Why, of course I remember them. Very fine they are. Like every lovely thing in your house. All mortgaged. I thought I'd like to leave these with you for a little. To look after with the other things. Why, sure, sure, Mrs. McLeod. Be glad to. Glad to keep them safe for you. I've had them ever since I was married. How... How much... I mean... How'd fifty dollars be? I thought they were worth more than that. I know, Mrs. McLeod, but that ain't the question. You ain't selling them to me, you know. And even if you were, why... All right, Mr. Blaker. Fifty dollars. I'll put them right in there with the rest of your things. I'll get you the cash right now. Mrs. McLeod. Thank you, Mr. Baker. And uh, seeing as how it's the first of the month, I made it 60. That newspaper's kind of an expensive hobby for you. It isn't a hobby. A hobby is something apart. The paper is everything to me. Thank you, Mr. Baker. You'll... You'll take good care of them. Sure will. Good morning, Mr. Blake. Good morning, Mrs. McLeod. Good morning, Mr. Doherty. We were just talking about you. Oh, really? I wonder if you could come over to my office this morning. I'd like to have a talk with you. Well, this is my busy morning. I have to get to court and... Uh... I shan't keep you long. Well, all right, then. How soon? As soon as you like. I'll see you. Good morning. <laughs> it's Pickwick. How's that? Oh, I beg your pardon. I was just looking to see what was making you laugh, so it's the Pickwick papers. <laughs> yeah, good, huh? Yes, I haven't read it for years. Worth taking another look at. I met Charles Dickens when he was here in 67. You did? But you shouldn't be lounging here reading that, you know. Why? Do you think I should be working? The police would think so. They're hard on vagrants in this town. They rope them in and put them to work with the road gang and treat them brutally. Well, I make a kind of business of saving men from that. 
You'd better go up to my house and have a meal and a bath. That's very kind of you, but... You go down the street and turn to your left. You'll see a big, old-fashioned sort of house. You can't miss it. Go round to the back and tell the colored woman that Mrs. McLeod sent you. Now, will you do that? Yes, I'd be glad to. Well, aren't you going? Why, uh, I just thought I'd finish this chapter. It isn't safe. Oh, just another couple of pages. Well, perhaps just a couple of more pages. But don't go getting interested and start the next chapter by mistake now. Oh, I won't. Well, goodbye, then. Goodbye. Thanks. Got here quick, Mrs. McLeod. This is Mr. Hirsch, my campaign manager. Oh, the elections. This lady is the editor of the Shield and Banner. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. That's quite a job for a little lady to be running a newspaper, isn't it? I've been doing it for 30 years, Mr. Hirsch, since my husband died. He founded the paper. Well, that's very interesting. You're quite a pioneer, aren't you? I'll step into the other office, Bill. See you later. Won't you sit down? I don't often get around to seeing a copy of your paper, but someone did show me this morning's issue. That was a pretty fresh editorial you had. I wasn't quite clear in what you were getting at, and that I gather there's something you don't like in the way the town's being run, is that it? Well, uh, yes, in a way. Uh-huh, just uh, what in particular? There are a lot of things. Those new houses on Parker Street, they're, they're not at all well built, you know. Mrs. McLeod, I built those houses. I, I know, but I thought perhaps you hadn't looked at them since they were finished. They're not safe. There have been accidents already. And then there are the new waterworks. They should have been ready long ago. Four more babies died of typhoid this week. And the police, they... Mrs. Mrs. McLeod, your paper does a very nice little job in printing the social news, weddings, and things like that. But if you feel you must have public-spirited editorials as well, I've got a couple here. I thought you might care to use them. Put your name on them. What do they say? Oh, they're good stuff. Written by a good man. Now, wait a minute. We'll just uh, change the name on them, eh? You sign yourself Vinnie McLeod, don't you? Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Mr. Doherty, you're treating me like a child. Oh, no, Mrs. McLeod. I'm treating you like an old lady going around poking her nose into what doesn't concern her and who's going to get herself badly bitten if she doesn't watch out. Now, you save yourself trouble and print those. Suppose I refuse. You won't refuse, so why discuss it? Now forget about editorials and worry about your bills and the mortgage on your house and the goodwill of the people who really amount to something in this town, eh? Now take those. Well, I'll read them. Say, Dad, are you going to be needing... Oh, good morning. Good morning, Pete. Uh, how's Jane? Jane's fine. I'm taking her away from work this morning. As I know, she told me. Well, I'd better be starting my day's work. Good morning. Good morning. Good day, Pete. Good day. Did you talk to her about that editorial? What'd she say? Oh, everything will be all right. Son, how serious are you about this niece of hers? Are you thinking of marrying her? Well, uh, I don't know that she'd have me. What? Why, well, she'd jump at you. Who are the McClouds compared to us? Would you mind my marrying her, Dad? I want you to have the things you want, son. I never did when I was your age. And it might kind of help to fix things up if the girl was one of the family. I wasn't thinking of that. No, no, but uh, there's no harm in killing two birds with one stone. Good morning, Mr. Robbins. Morning, Miss McLeod. Anything interesting this morning? No, just the usual. Vagrancy. Wife beaten. That's a newfangled sort of crime. In my day, men didn't beat their wives. The wives had pistols. Vagrancy, petty larceny, attempted arson, vagrancy. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Robbins. Good morning, Mrs. McLeod. And how are you this morning? I'm very well, Judge. It wouldn't seem like the old court if I didn't see you sitting there below me, writing down all my words of wisdom. 
You're very chipper this morning, Judge. Sure am. It's my birthday. 62 this morning. Yes, ma'am. Got a mighty nice lot of presents, too. Uh, what do you think of that? Present from my old friend, Bill Doherty. Oh, fine fella, Doherty. Solid gold, 18-carat repeater. Yes, sir. It's a splendid watch. Yes. Old Bill Doherty is all right. Now, what have we got this morning? Justice Court of Plattsville, Calamus County is now in session. Please come to order. Honorable Judge Flynn, presiding. Be seated. First case. Bring in the prisoners. George Renshaw, Hiram Webster, and Thomas Richards. Charged with vagrancy. Guilty or not guilty? guilty. Not guilty. 60 days. Didn't have jobs, eh? Well, you've got one now. We'll have you working for the city on the road, gang. Take them away. Next case. Oh, just a minute, please. I said not guilty. What's that? I say that I said not guilty. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah. Well, now, young fellow, who wants a trial? What's your name? Tom Richards. Thomas Richards. No fixed abode. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I guess that's right, yeah. Occupation, newspaper man. And uh, what newspaper do you work for? Well, not any right now. What was the idea of giving that as your occupation, then? Well, you've got to give something, don't you? And I have worked on newspapers. When? Oh, on and off, ever since I was a kid. But more off than on, I imagine. No, I would say about, oh, 50-50. <laughs> what are you doing here in Plattsville? Passing through, if you'll allow me. <laughs> Where did you sleep last night? I didn't sleep, I walked. And you still contend that you're not a vagrant? With no fixed abode, no means of support? Well, but I have means of support. Two dollars. <laughs> Well, after all, it is means of support. I'm no panhandler, I'm no vagrant. Well, I don't know what else you call a man who walks all night. A somnambulist. <laughs> Take those two out of there. I walked all night, Your Honor, because I like to walk. And I didn't want to spend the money for the room. Well, in this town, that constitutes vagrancy. The police find you sprawling in a public park, jobless. Your Honor, may I say a word? What is it? Well, I just wanted to say that if this young man wants a job, I'll give him one. What's that? I'm the editor of the Shield and Banner. And if you want a reporter's job, I'll give you one. Well, that's very kind of you, ma'am. Now, Mrs. McLeod, that's just plain silly. I need another man on the paper. And he's had experience, he says. But you don't know the first thing about him. I'll take a chance on him. What do you propose to pay him? Why, I, I hadn't thought. Now you'd better. If the court is going to release him, it has to make sure that he's going to make enough to keep himself. I'll see that he gets enough. Yes, but the court has to decide what is enough. It fixes the amount at $35 a week. First week's salary in advance. Well, none of you say. Well, it's rather a large salary to start with. Well, that's what you'll have to make it. Now, hold on. No, I agree. Oh, please, ma'am. No, it's all right. I agree. There. Now, will that be enough? May he go? Not so fast. The prisoner is still guilty of the charge of vagrancy, and that's the way it's got to go under the record. But... Owing to the intervention of Mrs. McLeod, a citizen of prominence and character, the court exercises its leniency and releases the prisoner on probation in her charge for two months. The prisoner is free to go. Thank you, Judge. I'll keep an eye on him. You better. And keep an eye on your belongings, too. <laughs> Next case. Where do we go from here? You'd better come with me. Here you are, ma'am. I'll give you back your money now. Why, what do you mean? 
and I'll be getting along. Where? Well, out of town, don't you think? But you're coming to work for me. Oh, no, you really didn't mean that, did you? But of course I meant it. Besides, if you don't, they'll put you in jail. That's why I offered it to you, so you wouldn't go to jail. Well, why should you be so interested in whether or not I'd go to jail? Because you didn't deserve it. I warned you what would happen. And because you were reading Dickens and... Well, look, Mrs. McLeod, it's very kind of you, but I don't want to stay in this town, so if, if it's all the same to you... But you can't go now. You're on probation to me. If you skip town, I'll get in trouble. And I'm afraid there are people who'd like to see me get in trouble right now. Seems to me you go around looking for it. Well, I can't just stand by and do nothing about the wicked things I see go on. Well, you've got a newspaper. Can't you do anything there? <laughs> I've tried. But you see, Doherty's the big boss. And he controls the other newspaper. And he's kind of powerful. Well, running a newspaper is not a woman's job. And why don't you get hold of some young person with plenty of fight in him and let him handle it for you? There isn't anyone. Though when I heard the way you spoke up to Flynn in court, I did wonder for a minute whether you might. Oh, oh no, no. No, I'm sorry. Looks like I got myself into something here. I I'll tell you what I'll do. I don't want to get you into trouble. So while my probation lasts, I'll come and work for you as a reporter. But as far as helping you straighten out that man, uh, or well, whatever his name is, I think you'll have to forget about that. Well, I guess maybe you'd like something to eat. Well, why not let it be on me and my very visible means of support? Will you step across the street? Well, that's very nice of you, but there's no point in wasting money, and there's plenty of food at home. Be down, McLeod. This is it. This is where I live. Oh, what do you know? Mr. McLeod built it nearly 50 years ago. It's known as McLeod's Folly. Big one, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is a little old-fashioned. Mm-hmm. Oh, might. But then I'm sort of an old-fashioned person. Come in here. That's you. Yes, that's me. Of course, it was a long time ago. Nearly 50 years. About the time you met Dickens? Yes. What you back home for, Ms. McLeod? Is anything wrong? No, oh, no, Ida. This gentleman is coming to work for me on the newspaper. Hmm. He'll be boarding here with us, and I think he'd like some food now. Mr. Richards, this is our Ida who looks after me. Are you? You ain't done said nothing to me about hiring anybody to work for you on the paper. Well, it wasn't settled till this morning. You ain't done told me you was thinking about it. I wasn't till this morning. Now go and get Mr. Richard something to eat. I'll tell you all about it later. Mm. I always have to tell Aida everything I do. If she feels anything is being kept from her, she has a misery of the spirit. And that's awful. Why don't you run upstairs and have a bath and a real shave while she's fixing breakfast? It's the door just opposite the head of the stairs. You'll find some old razors on a shelf in the closet. All right. What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. I'll go on upstairs and get cleaned up.
Yeah, who's there? Is you in the tub yet? No, not yet. Why? If you'll just hand your clothes through the door, I'll press them up for you while you have your bath. Here you are. Where's the pan? Still got them on. Wait a minute. Hey, uh, what day is it today? What do you mean, what day? I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what? Today I'm Thursday. What do you want to know for now? Oh, I just wondered. Here you are. I'll bring them right back and see that you wash it behind your ear. And catch my death of cold? Breakfast will be ready in a minute. Thanks. This is quite a nice library you have here. These are good bindings. What's the trouble, Mrs. McLeod? What won't you do? Knuckle under to Dougherty. You seem to be hipped on the subject of this Dougherty. What's he ever done to you? It isn't what he's done so much as what he is. He's bad. And everything he stands for is bad, too. Yeah, but why should you worry? Because right's right. Yes. Right's right, but what are you going to do about it? Mrs. McLeod, don't get yourself mixed up with politics and politicians. You haven't got a chance. I tried it myself once on a newspaper, but had the boy slip out from under me when the going got too hot for him. Left me holding a bag. So I'm not a crusader anymore. You can't win. So why hurt yourself trying? Because you've got to try. How do you suppose anything ever would have got done if people hadn't fought the bad things? How do you think this town would have got built? Or any town? Or America at all? Well, I remember this place when there wasn't anything. And then we started. And the bad ones came and the crooks and all the things you won't remember, though you must have read about them. But now it's worse than it was then, because it's hidden and corrupt. And this man, Doherty, wants me to print these editorials that he's had written, backing him up. I won't do it. I'd die, rather. Are you trying to sell me on that campaign of yours again? No. No, that wasn't fair of me. I'm all right now. I'm going down to the office. You come as soon as you've had your breakfast. Anyone will tell you where it is. Here's a copy of the paper. I'll run along. Your breakfast is ready. I said your breakfast is ready. Oh, thank you, Ida. Thank you. It isn't very respectful of you to use your aunt's newspaper to wrap up the lemonade. I don't think Auntie would mind. Do you mind your coming out with me today? No. Why? Oh, I don't think she seemed very pleased about it in the office this morning. What was she doing in your father's office? Oh, uh, Dad wanted to talk to her about something. What? I don't know. Here, let me help you. Pete, you're trying to hide something from me. No, no, I'm not. Jane, tell me something. You don't really like working on your aunt's paper, do you? I mean, you only do it because you have to. That's true, isn't it? I guess so, but what... If you were married and... and your husband had enough money, you wouldn't want to go on with it, would you? Guess not. Well then, Jane, will you marry me? Do you really want me to? More than I've ever wanted anything. Will you, Jane? This is Peter Doggerty. What's the matter? Nothing, only. Pete, have you ever read Romeo and Juliet? Hmm? 
Oh, it's about two people who loved each other, isn't it? And their family were enemies like ours. Pete, what did your father want with Aunt Vinnie this morning? Was it that editorial in the paper? Oh, that doesn't matter now, now that we've settled this. What do you mean? Well, Jane, your aunt's very fond of you, and she wouldn't want to do anything to hurt you or your husband or his family. Then it was that editorial. Is that why you asked me to marry you, to keep Aunt Vinnie from attacking your father? Oh, no, no, don't get... It was. Of all the low-down, beastly tricks... Jane, listen, I'm in love with you. Let me go. No, you can't believe things like that. I love you, Jane, really, I do. I don't believe you. I believe your father put you up to it as a way of silencing Aunt Vinnie. It's just the dirty, underhanded sort of thing he would think of, like everything else he does. Well, this is one trick he's not going to get away with. I'm going back to the office. You ready for some more? I said you ready for some more. Oh, you ain't ate half what I give you. What's the matter? Ain't they no good? Oh, they were fine. I ate them. Fine. Oh. You've been sitting up there reading that paper and letting your food get cold. What you so interested in that paper for? I want to find out what goes on around here. You don't have to read no paper for that. I could have told you. I knows everything that goes on in this town. Except how you got in. I took the town by surprise. Aida, uh, tell me, what is this Doherty like? I wouldn't saw my mouth for telling you. Oh, don't like him, huh? Did you like spiders? See, well, mm -hmm. well, let me fix you some more real hot. Oh, no thanks, I've got to be going. And thank you, Aida, very much for the information. Uh, you're very fond of Mrs. McLeod, aren't you? I certainly am. I takes care of her. There ain't no one else can. And she sure needs it sometimes. Yeah, I guess she does. Saddle for me, my milk white steed, oh, saddle for me a pony, oh, and I shall ride to find my bride that's gone with the raggle taggle gypsy, oh. Oh, that goes, uh, saddle for me, my white pal free, or saddle for me, my pony, oh. Oh, saddle for me, my white pal free, and saddle. You're right. That's right. Who are you? Oh, uh, you submitted some articles to Mrs. McLeod and have them published in the Shield and Banner. That's right. Well, I just came over to tell you that she can't use them. Is that a message from Mrs. McLeod? You can call it that. Did she tell you to come here and say that? Well, no, I, uh, I took that on myself. I didn't submit those articles to Mrs. McLeod. I gave them to her to publish. Well, she still can't use them. Mrs. McLeod does not print lies. What makes you think those articles are lies? I've worked on newspapers long enough to be able to smell the lies in editorials like that. Is that so? Yes. Just a minute. You're the guy that Mrs. McLeod pulled out of the court this morning. I was wondering what she did it for, but now I know. Though it ain't like her to uh, hire a roughneck to do her dirty work for her. Listen to me a minute. Johnny come lately. You better watch your step around here until you learn a little bit more about the setup. Mrs. McLeod is a has-been. If she's content to stay that way, that's okay. But if she isn't, she's gonna make trouble for herself and for anybody else that's helping her. Do you get that, tramp? Yeah, I get it. Well, you go back and tell her I said so. I don't carry messages like that to people like her. You don't have to tell her. She knows it. That's why she sent you here. And another thing, it ain't healthy to be carrying messages like that to people like me, either. I'll say it's not. No, indeed. Oh, I see. Well. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe you were. Sorry, I... I'll take these back to her and... and see to it that she prints them. Well, that's better. I, uh, I guess I didn't quite understand. That's right. And, uh, I, uh, well, maybe Mrs. McLeod was exaggerating a bit. She probably was. All right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Son, where's the Sheila Banner off? I thought you worked there. I do, but I haven't been there yet. Well, it's right down the street, across the square. You can't miss it. It's a crummy old place.
Good morning. Morning. Is Mrs. McLeod inside? No, she ain't. She just stepped over to the morgue. Somebody did? Never knew a day when there wasn't. Mm. And always the wrong one, isn't it? What do you want? That is not a very nice warm greeting to give a new member of your staff. How's that? I'm coming to work here. What as? As a reporter, to begin with. Who hired you? Mrs. McLeod. She didn't say anything to me about it. My name is Richards, Tom Richards. Uh, you wouldn't like to tell me yours. Hurdle. Hurdle Ferguson. My brother Willie's been the only reporter this paper's had for the past 35 years, and I don't see what we need another for. She can't pay anything. Don't expect her to. As a matter of fact, I'm perfectly willing to pay my own way. Here's the first installment, $35. What are you doing it for? The experience? It'll be an experience, I hope. My name is Richards, yours is Ferguson, brother to the dragoness outside. I've come to work here, Mrs. McLeod hasn't told you anything about it, I know all that. Do you mind saying that all over again? No, 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 don't, don't. I don't think I could handle it. What did you say? I'm not being fired. You're not taking my place. Oh, no, no, don't worry. Oh, good. <laughs> you had me scared. Will you have a little drink? No, thanks. Don't you drink? Not this early. Oh, that's when I need it the most, early. Uh, whose desk is that? Uh, James, society editor, hasn't shown up yet this morning. I wish I hadn't. You met Jane? No, not yet. Oh, nice girl, Jane. Stubborn, though. Well, who else is there? Nobody. Zimmerman through there, compositor, and Alf who runs the linotype. Cozy little bunch, friendly, you know. Cloud. Used to be his office. Never got around to changing it. Nothing ever gets changed around here. <laughs> That's the charm of the place. Outside, everything different. 1906. Modern. Hustle. Inside, charm. Dust. Quiet. Everything just as it was. Oh, excuse me a minute, will you? Well. Maybe you're a little early this morning, aren't you? <laughs> Cute, isn't he? <laughs> you want to feed him? Yeah. All right. Here, take a little piece of that. Now, there's another example. That mouse. Been coming here, to my certain knowledge, uh, 30 years. Well, maybe not that mouse, but a mouse. First time I saw him, thought I had the DTs. Went on the wagon for a week, but the mouse came back, so I fell off the wagon. Comes around every day about lunchtime for its food. What does he do on Sunday? I never thought of that. I guess he sleeps late. Maybe I should leave food out Saturday night. Yeah, maybe you should. Oh, but I'd hate to have him come out and nobody here. I got a tender heart, you know. Now, why didn't I ever think of that? Thirty years that little mouse has been coming here, and I never thought of Sundays. You thought of it right away. You're bright. <laughs> Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Vinnie. Okay, baby. Beat it now. 
Here comes the boss. Oh, that wretched little mouse. Willie, I have told you not to encourage it. May I have a word with you, Mrs. McLeod, without the mouse? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Would you like to come into the office? Thank you. Well, did you like your breakfast? Oh, yes, it was fine. Good. Fine. Uh, I've been to see Doherty. What for? I want to see what he was like and tell him he wouldn't print his editorials. What did he say? Well, he was rather insistent that we print them. No, was it? So, uh, I finally agreed that we would. You agreed? But I told you they're lies. I can't. I... Well, I told him we would and we will. You've betrayed me. Oh. But I didn't tell him how we would print them. We'll take all his lies, all his lies, and print them in italics. And then just ahead of them, the reason why we're printing them. He's put a gun to your head, and this is your reply. Yes, but... But what? I don't dare. It's either this or knuckle under. Now, it's not going to be easy. It may not even be safe. It's going to cause an awful lot of trouble and no telling where it may lead to. If I do it, will you stay and see it through? Certainly. Then I'll do it. This girl. We'll print them tomorrow. Oh, wait, no, 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 not so fast. We can't afford to go off half-cocked here. This is too important. Look, I've been studying the paper, and uh, I've got some suggestions to make. Yes? Yeah, you've got to change your whole style. Leave your name and slogan on your masthead. They're fine. But you've got to make your paper live up to them. You've got to make it modern and attractive and introduce some new features. If you're going to make the fight you want, you've got to attract attention to your paper. Yes, but I haven't the money to do all that. Well, it won't take much. Not in the beginning. Then when the new subscribers come in and the new advertisers, why... Oh, it's what I always wanted to do, only... Well, somehow I couldn't do it alone. Will you let me do it? Yes. For some reason or other, I trust you completely. Fine. Now, will you call your people together? I'd like to talk to them. Of course. Myrtle, will you come in, please? And ask Mr. Zimmerman and Alf and Willie to come in, too? It's exciting, isn't it? Oh, Jane. Willie. Al, Zimmerman. Jane, I want you to meet Mr. Richards. He's our new managing editor. Mr. Richards, this is my niece, Jane, and our society editor. How do you do? You're late. Oh, I'm sorry, I went on a picnic. Did you have a nice time, dear? No. Thank you. Oh, everybody, I have an announcement to make. Mr. Richards is going to take over the paper. He's going to help me fight Mr. Doherty. He has wonderful ideas. Tell them about them. Well, the first is a revolutionary one. That the Shield and Banner cease publication for three days. Until Monday. You mean close down? Why, there hasn't been a day since we started that the paper hasn't come out. But then on Monday, we come out with a brand new paper. And everybody will buy it out of curiosity to see what we've done. And on the front page will be those articles of Doherty's. Then we'd better be ready for the fireworks. Well, what do you say? I don't Wait, know. I, I don't know. You like it? Very well. All right. I don't know who you are or what's going on, but if you're out to fight old Doherty, I say splendid. That's the ticket. What do you think? All right, now look, we've got an awful lot of work to do, and let's get to it. Cartoon is libelous, Mr. Doherty. You could sue for damages in court. Sue for damages. What you've got to do, Bill, is throw this guy Richards right back in the claim. Any excuse will do. Then you won't have any more trouble. That's when it would start. Put him in jail. That's what he's asking for. After this, it would be just enough to start things really humming. Mr. Richards? 
Mr. Richard. Mr. Richard. Oh, oh, yes. Oh. What time is it? It's half past nine. You done overslept yourself. I'll say I done. I brought you your coffee and your morning paper. Oh, good. Let me see that. You sure made that look different. I guess getting that paper out what made you all oversleep, wasn't it? No, I was reading Mrs. McLeod's book. I couldn't go to sleep until I'd finished it. You sure made a mess out of it. How come we let the pins out of it? Now I got to put it back just like it was, or Ms. McLeod, she'll know that I give it to you. I'll put it together. Sugar? Yeah, three. I'll bring you plenty of butter, too. Good. Uh, uh, do you think anybody might want to print that? I'm going to print it in our paper. It's exactly what we wanted. Memories of the good old days. There's our title. How are you going to tell her how you come to read it? I'm not going to tell her. I'm just going to print it. She'll be mad. Nobody's ever mad to see themselves in print as an author. I don't see your name in that paper nowhere, and you didn't write most of it or draw it. I'm the exception that proves the rule. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Doherty phoned. Oh, good. Hmm, expected to hear from him. Did he ask for me? You especially. Fine, I'll go see him. Give him some more rope. Ha! Give him some for me. Mr. Richards is here to see you, sir. Tell Mr. Richards to come in. Yes, sir. Morning. Morning. Understand you want to see me? Yes, take a seat. I'm just looking at a copy of the new Sheelan banner. Understand you're responsible for it. Well, I helped some. Hardly recognize the old sheet. Did you draw this picture of me? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good, very good. The joke's on me, Mr. Richards. Didn't realize when you were in here the other day that we had an artist in our midst. Well, I've got a lot of unsuspected gifts. But you didn't get me in here to congratulate me. Son, Mrs. McLeod is paying you $35 a week, isn't she? Now, there's no reason why a good newspaper man like you should be working for chicken feed. Mr. Winterbottom here is thinking of retiring from the news next year. And I thought maybe if you'd care to join us for a spell, by the time he's ready to retire, you would be broken in and uh, able to take his place. Yeah? Well, that's all, except that we can pay you more than Mrs. McLeod can. We can pay you, uh, double. Yeah? Well, uh, what's your reaction? Negative. The news has the largest circulation of any paper in these parts. Sure job. Give you a contract, of course. Say a contract for two years. Well, what do you say? No. Well, we could arrange for raises. Maybe a bonus. Mr. Doherty, there's no sense of your going on raising the ante. I'm just not interested. You better be. What'd you say? I said you'd better be. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of work to do at the office, so I'll be getting along. Oh, I'm sorry. We could have used you. Oh, I'm sure. I'd be obliged if you send back the rest of those editorials you took away with you. Oh, I'm sorry. We've accepted them. You'll find them in our paper every morning and a lot of other things, too. Hmm. We've got a lot of questions for you to answer. You think you're smart, don't you? Bamboozling an old woman into giving you a home and a job, yeah. But you've got a lot of men to deal with here. That's right. What you're doing isn't healthy. <laughs> yeah, and this office isn't healthy either. It smells bad. I'll be getting along. You may be very brave about your own safety, Mr. Richards, but you know Mrs. McLeod is still your employer, and if anything should happen to her... That man is crazy. I'll take care of him. Oh, just a minute. This thing's got to be handled right. It's got to be handled. You were right when you said that Mrs. McLeod is the one to get at. I think I know how to deal with her. Well, I hope it's something you can do quickly. Maybe you're willing to sit still and let her go on printing accusations that'll land you in jail. Uh, she's got nothing on me. What makes you think that? You don't deny there are things that guy could think up that would send us both to the state penitentiary, do you? Well, I don't intend to go there. No. You know what it's like. I don't. And I don't intend to find out. I'll move in my own way. Well, you can as far as it concerns you. But for what concerns me, I'll move in mine.
Sorry I'm late, but I'm glad you didn't wait for me. I'm afraid supper isn't very nice tonight. Oh, I never know what I'm eating anyways. You will tonight. Yes, you will tonight. What did Mr. Doherty want? Mrs. McLeod, I know this is going to sound awfully silly, but have you got a gun? Why, yes, I have several. We always used to carry them in the old days. Why? Because I think you're going to have to start carrying them again. I won't guarantee that even your life will be safe if you go through with this. Do you want to stop? No. Well, then, neither do I. But, Auntie, if Mr. Richard says that... You don't have to stay, Jane. Maybe you shouldn't. Well, if you two can, I can too. But I think Auntie should go away someplace. Well, to an old lady's home? I couldn't bear it. I'll stay, of course. Life doesn't matter. It's what you do with it. Your supper got all dried out waiting for you. Is you all through with yours? Yes, thank you, Aida. You know, I'm afraid I'll have to have Dr. Chase look at you. Doctors won't do me no good, Mrs. McLeod. I's got a misery of the spirit. There ain't gonna be no dessert tonight. I's had a castaway with it. Was your food as bad as this? No, she had longer to spoil yours in. I'll go and talk to her. Pork chops. You all get along out of here. You shouldn't be eating pork chops. Pork chops are the worst thing for a misery. I'll have them. You put that down. You've got your supper inside. You sure do know how to cook pork chops. You know, with a talent like yours for cooking, I'm surprised you're still a single woman. Who done told you I was a single woman? I'm a deserted wife. I gets alimony. You do? Well, I'm entitled to it. Mm -hmm. I got 15 years of alimony coming to me when I finds out where my husband is. I can't understand a man deserting a woman like you with your talent for cooking to say nothing of your beauty. Well, Mr. Richards, I was trying to figure out the same thing myself. I guess he just lost his taste for me. Uh, at least he was led astray. Mm-hmm, this is fine. Now, look, I've got to go out. Will you do something? Will you cook some up for Mrs. McLeod and Miss Jane? They done had their supper inside, and I ain't cooking no more around here until I find out what's going on. Where y'all going tonight? Well, if I tell you, will you cook some for them? Well, I might. Mm-hmm, all right. You put them on, and I'll tell you. I went out and tried to get some proof on Doherty. Who you gonna see? Uh, Willie Ferguson told me that a woman named Gas House Mary was paying Doherty protection money. You know her? Well, everybody knows Miss Mary McGovern. She runs a place called the uh, El Dorado. I know that, too. I know that old Doherty tried to bust her place up because she wouldn't contribute to his city orphans fund. At least that's what he calls his own pocket. Well, I know she's paying protection now, so I'm gonna see her. You like Gas House Mary. She runs a straight place. She says I always run a straight place, and she do. Mm -hmm. Decent, huh? Sure am. And pleasant, too. No gambling. And all her girls are nice girls. Don't you start no cutting up there. Now, Aida, do I look like the type that cuts up? You's a man, ain't you? That boss of hers will cut your head wide open if you try to start anything. These pork chops would cure anything. for me and my friends. Well, that's what I want to be. We better get together. How about a little drink? You get yourself beer at the bar. Don't allow no hard liquor in here. And I'd be obliged if you'd leave my table. Oh, you don't know what I want yet. Now, look, Mrs. McGovern, you're a woman of the world, and there's very little that goes on around here that you don't know about. And I'm just wondering if you'd sort of, oh, share what you know with me. Young man, for the last time, will you leave this table and stop making advances to me? At my age. You've got me all wrong. I've been making inquiries around town, and everybody tells me you've got exactly what I need. Hey, Jake! Wait, Jake! No, let me... Wait a minute, Jake, will you? I wasn't cutting up. What do you think you've got here, a rag doll? Oh, you naughty boy.
seen a lot of fresh guys come in here, Ms. McGovern, but I've never seen one who was fresh enough to try to get fresh with you. I haven't been spoken to like that for 30 years. He won't come in here no more, Ms. McGovern. Ms. McGovern, I want to apologize. The best way you can apologize is by taking yourself right back through that window. I run a straight joint. I know you do. That's why I want to talk to you. My name is Tom Rich, and I work for Mrs. McLeod. I'm out after Doggerty's high. Oh, just a minute. Eh? Tom Richard. Say, was it you that did that drawing up in the paper this morning? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Come to my parlor. Jake, look after things. If there's any trouble, send for me before you do anything. Good music you have here. Not good, loud. That's what they want. Excuse me. I don't allow no rough stuff here. I don't like dames coming in here dressed up to kill. It's bad for my girls to see a fox fur like that. Makes them discontented. I run a straight joint. Now, what's this all about? Let's have a drink. Set them up. Well, I hear that you've been paying off to the Doggerty outfit. Want to tell me about it? Are you to put in the paper? No, not if you don't want me to. I can't afford for you to. Not in my position. I can't afford to get in wrong with Doggerty. I'll tell you if you want to hear, but you've got to give me a word. You won't print it. Give him a word. Because if you did, I'd just deny it. School. Let's go. Who's his nose? The late Mr. McGovern. Mm hmm. Quite a fella. Well, Tom, I've run decent places all my life. This joint ain't exactly smart, but nobody can say it ain't run right. So when one of Bill Doherty's guys came around, proposed I make a contribution to his city orphans fund, I said, what do I need protection for? I run a straight place. A couple of nights later, a lot of hoodlums turned up here and smashed the place up. So I made a fat contribution to the city orphans fund. Fill them up again. Folks will tell you this used to be a wide open town full of bad men. Well, there's a kindergarten compared to what there is now. What are you going to do about it? I suppose you tell me. I'd kind of like to hear some fresh ideas. Well, I, uh, I had an idea that we uh, might get the honest citizen together and uh, give them the facts. Yeah. Well, I found it's no good depending on honest citizens for a fight. So you can't help me, huh? Sorry. I'd sure like to get even with that hippopotamus, but I can't afford to. Well, thanks, Mary. Thanks very much. Mary, do you know anything about a man named Bill Swain? I hear he's top monkey around these parts and that he hates Doherty. Bill Swain? You know him? I certainly do. What's he like? <laughs> he used to be a fighting man. He's the state democratic leader up at the Capitol. I'm going to see him. <laughs> I'll give you a letter to him. Good, thanks. Sure. I ain't set eyes on Bill Swain for 30 years, but he used to be all right. Born all right. Bill Swain? At one time was kind of sweet on me. Well, we had a quarrel about ketchup. About what? Ketchup, tomato ketchup. Bill Swain used to put it on everything. Melon, cereal, everything he ate, he put ketchup on. And when it came to him putting it on my homemade peach ice cream. Mmm, peach. Well, I told him it wasn't genteel. And he was a quick-tempered man, and I was a quick-tempered woman. He went off in a tantrum, and I married Ted McGovern. I haven't seen Bill since. But he's a straight shooting guy. Here. Fine. I just said, uh, this is to introduce Tom Richards of the Shield and Banner. He's a good scout. Thank you, Mary. So are you. Gas House Mary has been a friend of mine for nearly 40 years. Though I haven't seen her lately. What's she like now? Still good looking? Oh, she's what you might call a, mm, a very fine figure of a woman. Well preserved, eh? That's the word. <laughs> uh, funny how perfume will bring things back. Matter of fact, I was just a kid first time I met Mary. I was riding the range, knowing more about horses and steers than women. You sure you won't have a sandwich? Oh, no thanks. Just coffee. Well, help yourself. Uh, may I? Well, yes. Well, say, that's something I've never tried. Is that good? 
Ketchup is pretty good with anything, isn't it? Yes, sir. I've got to try that. Why, that's good. Now, I've been missing something all these years. <laughs> well, now, let's get back to business, son. Now, you don't know this Doherty like I do. He's just as crooked as they come. And what you're trying to do is just like stepping on a rattlesnake. But Mary told me you were a fighting man. Yes, but I'll pick when and who I fight. No, I'm sorry, son, but there's no dice. Doherty is the biggest vote getter in the state, and I've got too much at stake. Now, that may sound yellow to you, but that's politics. Now, that's what they all say. Everybody I've been to see, they can't afford to fight Doherty. Well, I'm going on with it. Well, you're different. You're the only one with nothing to lose. Yeah, I guess that's true. I've got nothing to lose. Well, good luck to you, son. Thanks. Looks like I'll need it. What's the matter, fella? You saw about anything? Yeah. You've been sitting there for the last three hours without a word out of you. Kind of discouraged over something, ain't you? Yes and no. Feel like talking? You talk. How come you're on the road? Oh, well, don't believe in paying railroad fares. You ain't dressed right. I know. I just took to wearing these things again. Oh, that's bad. That's the first step. Next thing you know, you'll be working in an office. I used to do it. Twenty of the best years of my life I wasted. Going to work in the morning, coming home in the evening, sitting around the house, putting money in the bank, always knowing where I'd be the next day or the next year. And one day I lit out and I never went back. And I've been happy ever since. I used to be on my own, but uh, I took a job. Too bad. Too bad. What made you? I, I bet it was a dame. Mm -hmm. Why? How was she like? Pretty, huh? Used to be. Uh -huh. uh, married to her? That's bad. That's bad. That makes it worse. Feel obligated, don't you? Mm, kind of. And that's what they do to you. That's what they try to do. They pin a guy down. But you duck out, son, like I do. Be on your own again. You go where you like, when you like. If you feel like spending the winter in Florida, you go to Florida. Did you ever hear of a poem called The Open Road of Freedom? No. Well, it, it goes something like this. There's a road that passes cities, and it leaves them on the side. It goes across the mountain, and it takes them in their stride. You can meet with friends along that road, or travel all alone. It's the open road of freedom, where you call your soul your own. Not good, but I can see where it has a point. Who wrote it? A fellow by the name of Tom Richards. Just a tramp. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you. Well, what are you doing here all alone this time of night? Oh, just sitting. Where did you disappear to? I went up to see Bill Swain. Thought he might help. Yes, and? No, nah, he won't. He's afraid of Doherty, just like everybody else is. Won't do a thing. So, you and I have got to do this on our own. What's the matter? I'm afraid we can't go on. The bank has called the mortgage on the paper and the house. At least, it's not the bank. It's Doherty. He's had the mortgages transferred to him, and, well, he, he won't renew them. How long have you got? Oh, a month or two, I guess. But even if it were a year, I couldn't raise it. Well, it was nice while it lasted. Oh. How did that happen?
Oh, uh... How did you get hold of that? Aida gave it to me. Angry? Yes, I am. That wasn't meant for publication. Well, I thought it was very good. Did you really? Well, certainly. I wouldn't have printed it if I hadn't. Still, you had no right to print it. However, I guess it doesn't matter. Now we're closing down. Yeah, just as you became an authoress, too. Well, that's tough. You know, if, uh, if you gave up the fight, and after all, that's what Doherty wants, you could publish that and go on running your paper. Under his orders, it would be like being a slave. No, I'd sooner see it go entirely. Have a go down fighting, huh? Well, wouldn't you? It's not my paper. Well, it's mine. And it's going to die mine. Now, let's go home. Well, I suppose this will mean you're going away. But you're not the kind to stay put. Even the little while you've been here, you've been sort of itching to get away, haven't you? Even though you've been enjoying the fight, just as a fight. You see too much, Mrs. McLeod. But you mustn't go away feeling you've been licked. I'm not going away. Remember, I'm on probation. But I don't know what there'll be for you to live on now. I won't be able to go on. And I'm afraid there's no one else here who will give you a job. What are you going to do? I hadn't thought. It didn't seem important. <laughs> well, I think it is, kind of. Come on. Let's go home. You've been very good to me, Tom. You don't mind my calling you, Tom? No. I sort of feel you're one of the family. Oh, you needn't worry. I know you don't want to belong anywhere, really. In the beginning, I did have silly dreams that you and Jane might like each other. And you might become part of the family, really. Stay with us and... That would be about all you'd need. Oh, I know it was silly. And not like you. One must never try to make people over or hold them. You needn't be scared. I'm not. What is it? Nothing except I like you, Mrs. Mackey. Come on. Go. I'll have Aida fix some spoon bread and some cocoa. Or perhaps you'd like something stronger. You stay right there and keep that covered. Good girl.
Did you see who they were? I saw Doherty's friend, Hirsch. I suppose it was all Doherty's doing. Yeah, I guess so. I'm sorry the shooting upset me so. And Vinnie was very ashamed of me. She said it was no way for McLeod to act. How does your head feel now? I know it's there. I'm glad it is. Are you? You might have been killed. And what is it? Come on, let's get it on. I've got to get down to the office. What for? Have you forgotten we're running a newspaper? This is big news. Yes, I guess it is, but you can't go out. You ought to rest. I don't need any rest. I've got to get down there. This is the biggest story you've ever read in your young life. Is that all it means to you, a story? This is what we've been waiting for. Every move we've made has met with resistance. Now they've done it for us. They've dropped it right in our laps. An attack on Mrs. McLeod. This will break the town wide open. Yes, I guess it will. I guess I was forgetting all about that and acting like a woman. Just thinking of the human side of things. There's nothing wrong with that. You're a good nurse. Got nice hands. I can't put your bandage on very well if you do that. All right, get it on. This may hurt. I can take it, go on. There. Thanks. There, you see, you can't go down to the office. You stay there, put your feet up here. You can dictate the story to me. I'm ready. Headline, Vinnie McLeod shot. I'm talking to you. You can't go in there. You come right back here. What are you doing here? I, I want to speak to you. Listen, I, I know you don't think much of us, but the, there's one thing I've got to tell you. We had nothing to do with this business. You've got to believe that, Jane. You can think what you like about us, but you've got to know that. How dare you come here? Well, I had to tell you. Nothing to do with it. Your father framed the whole That's thing. That's not true. He knew nothing about it, I swear. I don't believe you. And even if he didn't, what about the rest? You don't deny he's out to ruin Aunt Vinnie, do you? And you're helping him making love to me to try and get me to desert her. I made love to you because I wanted you. I still want you. Go away. Jane. Get out of here. OK. I guess I should have told you about that. Yes. Very gratifying to know that we all have the same interests at heart. The Reverend Landon has suggested that we nominate a reform committee. I would like to propose as chairman my managing editor, Mr. Tom Richards. Perhaps somebody would second this. Uh, Mrs. McLeod, I have the very great pleasure of seconding Mr. Richards' nomination as chairman. All in favor? Ah. Ah. Sure. Sure. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. This is a very encouraging sight. It's good to know that you have the interest and welfare of your town at heart, but it's better to know that you've at last decided to do something. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Mary. What is that woman doing here? Same as you are, Mabel Tinkins. Came to support Vinnie McLeod. Hiya, Vinnie. Glad to see you, Mary. Won't you sit down? Tom, find a chair for Mary. Sit right uh, here, Mary. Uh, Don't bother. I'm not staying. If I just have a word with you, in the back room, maybe. All right, fine. Excuse us for just a minute, won't you? Please. Well, I think I'll step out for a moment. Now, will you stay right here? Myrtle, please don't embarrass me before the townspeople. I don't want to be on no committee. You'd only lose all respectable folks, and you need them in a thing like this. That's right. I just came to tell you I'm with you, and you can print that story I told you if you think it'll do any good. Well, I know it will. I ain't holding out no more. Oh, Here's the girl, Mary. Have a drink. There aren't any glasses, but let us all have a drink. Sure. Here's the good work. No, no, it's too early for him. Here's to you, Mary. 
Thank you, Willie. <laughs> now, committees need dough. Here's my contribution. It usually goes to the orphans fund. But this time, you can have it. Thanks. I'll slip out this way. Good luck, sonny boy. You're doing a good job. If I were 30 years younger, well, skip it. A colorful woman, that. A colorful woman. Yes, yeah, she certainly is, Willie. Heart of gold, old Mary, a heart of gold. Oh, the tidy sun. darkity has been doing very well. Even smells good. with you. Okay, how are they with you? Couldn't be better. Your son's been coming down to my place in the evenings lately. I told him to stay out of there. Well, there are worse places he could go to. His own home, I should think. And from the way he stays out of it, I'd say he agrees with me. You know, Pete's a good boy, really. Though he does seem to be pretty low in his spirits about something these days. You don't have to tell me about my own son. Well, sometimes fathers and sons are the last people to know about each other. And I kind of thought maybe Pete didn't know about you. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing, nothing. Glad to run into you, Mr. Doherty. Oh, by the way, my contribution to your orphan's fund. You won't be getting it this month. I've just given it to the reform committee. You know all about that, don't you? You know what it's for, to get the town de-skunked. Hey, let me out of here. Listen, you big baboon. You got no right to keep me in here. I know the law. I'm entitled to bail. Sure you're entitled to bail. You know what it is, $1,500. They got no right putting a bail like that on me and then not letting me put my place in my house up for security. Well, it's no good you're blaming me. It's the judge's order. It was old Doc and his orders, and you know it. Just like everything in this town is old Doc and his orders. You work under his orders. Chief of police. A lop-eared rabbit with one kidney to make a better chief of police than you. Why didn't you stand up to him? I stood up to him. Listen, where did it get you? Oh, it's you, is it? And what are you doing leaving me in here? I think it's kind of a nice place for you to be. Well, you get me out of here. What you got that committee of yours for? It's a fight old Doherty, isn't it? What was Doherty who put me here? It's him who's keeping me here. No lilac-livered, graft-grabbing, pie-eyed, pot-bellied burrow. You're right. She does talk too much. Listen, you. You think you'd come here and laugh at me, but you wait till I get outside these bars and give you a chance to put your fists up. I've cleaned up men three times your size. Two of them at a time. You let me out of here and take you both on. And the magistrate, and old Doherty, and the whole of your blue nose committee that thinks itself too good to lift a finger to help me. I suppose in your job, you get used to language of this kind. But I can't stand it. Come on, let's get out. Come back here. Come back here. You know, I wonder if you didn't make a great mistake in taking her in. Well, it's my idea. Orders are orders. Mm -hmm. Well, if she starts kicking on the cell doors, you take her shoes off. Hello? I've got some news for you, Mr. Swain. He's arrested Gas House Mary. What? What, 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 what for? Disorderly my foot. Mary's always on a straight place. Where is she now? In jail, yelling her head off. Well, I don't want her. Well, you get her out. How much? Fifth? Oh, I say, that's illegal. Hey, listen, son. I'll wire the door. You get her out and quick. Why, that poor little woman. If they touch one hair on her pretty little head, why... Say, listen, son. I'm coming in with you. I'm coming in with all four feet. I'll bust that administration wide open. This time, Bill Doherty, he, well, he's just hanged himself. And you can tell him that for me. He's hanged himself. Take the coffee things, leave the decanter. Yes, sir, Mr. Doherty. I reckon Mr. Pete won't be home for his supper again tonight. I guess not. You go to bed. Yes, sir, Mr. Doctor. Hello. Hello, son. Want supper? No, thanks. What's wrong, son? Not a thing. There is a dance house at Maradai, can me true love goes there most every night, and he takes a strange one upon his knee. Cut it out, will you, Dad? What? The kidding. 
And don't you think now that vexes me? And still she cried, I love him the best. I'm going to bed. Stay here. What is it, the McLeod girl, eh? Won't she have you? Would you expect her to? Is there any reason for acting like a moonstruck kid down at Gas House Mary's? You have not been there tonight. She's in jail. She's out. They bailed her out. Who did? Bill Swain. Dad, are they true, the things they say? What do they say? They think you brought those killers here. Do you think that? Oh, I know you didn't. But the other things. Son, there's a lot I've never told you. Didn't think there was any need for you to know. I don't know that there is now. I've got to know where we stand. Because of the girl, eh? She won't have you on account of me, is that it? I see what you're up against. Sorry, son. I can't back down now, especially when you tell me Bill Swain's in on it. He's out to get me, and I've got to fight with everything I've got. But you can duck out if you want to. What do you think I am? Tell me, Dad, how bad is it? Bad enough that they could send me to jail if I didn't fight them. I didn't know. What is it?
Without talking about it. I can't do anything without Tom Richards now. What is it you can't do anything about without me? Oh, Tom, I'm so glad you're back. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. What's he doing here? He wants to make a compromise. Compromise? After we've got him licked? I'm sorry. There's no room for compromise in any of this. Now, just a minute. Let's look at this thing sensibly. From whose point of view? From all our points of view. You said you got me licked. Yes. Well, I'm not admitting that. You've got me to a place where I'd just as soon not go on fighting. There's nothing to be gained by you, except you could run me into jail, maybe. And I have reasons for not wanting to go to jail. Who hasn't? Oh, I'm not thinking of myself. He's thinking of Jane and Pete. And you're willing to let everything drop because of that? And allow things to go on as they were? No, Mr. Doherty says he's willing to clear out. Look, suppose you tell me exactly what your proposition is. Listen. Tramp. Johnny, come lately. Okay, I said that. Mr. Richards. That's a lot better. You two have been out to run me out of town. Well, I'm ready to go. If I stay here fighting you, it'll only make it worse for Pete and the girl, whether I win or lose. And my boy's happiness means a lot to me. Well, I've had a hankering for a long time now to do some fishing and some horseshoe pitching down in Florida. I thought that if I went down there and stayed for a long time, for good, maybe, well, then you could call off your hounds and... Go on, go on. Lenny McLeod could go on running her paper and publishing her book about the good old days. And the kids could get married. And, well, that's about all. What do you say, Tom? Well, would that satisfy you? I think so. 
When would you leave? As soon as you like. All right. Okay, then I'll be going. I want to tell you something, Benny McLeod. I've always kind of liked and admired you. I don't think you're a smart woman, but you're a kind and understanding one. I haven't got you figured out yet. <laughs> no? Just what was your game in all this? Mm. Just something I got into. Well, I'll be going. Oh, uh, maybe you'd care to have this. What is that? The mortgage is cancelled. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. It's all right. All right, nothing to cry about. Nothing to be afraid of anymore. I know. That's what I'm crying for. <laughs> Doggerty is on his way. His works are a thing of the past, and all is well in Plattsburgh. That was goodbye, Tom. Wasn't it? What? You'll be going away now, won't you? What made you say that? You like your freedom, don't you, Tom? Yes, Mrs. Mack, I do. I do like my freedom, but I also like yours. That's what all this has been about these past few weeks, so that a few people could live the way they want to live. The town, Pete and Jane and Mary, and you. And now you've done it, you'll be on your way. I guess so. Johnny come lately and gone so soon. Oh, but I'll be back to see you almost any time, before you know it. It's strange. What? How little I know about you. Where you come from. Where you're going. Anything. Have you no one belonging to you anywhere? Haven't you even got a girl someplace? <laughs> sure. Sure I have. You're my girl. <laughs>